it's once again Bill Peters and we're fresh back from the Parafest 2017 up here in Vassalboro, Maine at the old mill. Um, we met the Maine Ghostbusters and entirely lost all the video and film but I'm going to have a follow-up interview with them coming up. Um, we saw booths from Swarm, uh, which does Bigfoot searches, uh, aerial phenomenon, UFOs, and such. And But the big news was we got to talk to Bill Brock. Now, Bill Brock um, is a... He's a little bit of an adventurer. He has recently been working with Destination America. Uh, he is uh, Team Rogue, um, or the Rogue Team on YouTube, uh, is something that you definitely have to check out. Uh, I get, I do interview him here in a few minutes. Um, as you can see from what's scrolling by here, they, there was a lot of people. It was uh, quite big for a first year uh, event. Um, I gave a talk on out of ancient out of, out of place artifacts and and uh, things like that. We picked up some subscribers and hopefully some members for the AA Theory group on Facebook. And we had um, oh, wait till you see the pictures of the Ghostbuster team. Uh, they are full gear, all out Ghostbuster Central, and I'll throw a couple of. Um, pictures. I took some pictures of like the uh, mm -hmm. uh, spirit traps and things like that. So, um, what else did we do? They had a live ghost hunt after hours, which I did not attend. I actually had a two and a half hour drive back. So, I still got home quite late. So, let's just call it good at that. <laughs> let's see, what else? Uh, I had a little adventure on the way in. I got to um, Vassalboro and I, like, oh my God, I did not bring my chairs. So I stopped at the um, this antique shop. I says, I just need a couple of chairs. And so she hems and haws and she finally finds these antique folding chairs that are just nuts. That you fold each leg out independently. Then you fold the seat down on the legs. It's quite involved. Anyway, I go, well, I'm looking at it going, oh, God, she's going to charge me 60 bucks for these or something. She looks at me and she goes, five bucks each. I throw in the fourth one because the seat doesn't stay attached. I was like, absolutely, I'm in. So, did that just before I got there. And then I get there and they got, I brought tables. I brought those chairs. I find out the tables and chairs are already provided. Did not know that. Did not know that. I am used to having to supply my own stuff, so that's what I did. But anyway, I want to talk more about Bill Brock. Bill Brock, um, let me tell you something. I could sit there and talk to this man literally for hours and hours and hours and hours. Um, matter of fact, I, I he felt like a friend like almost immediately. It's uh, quite amazing, and uh, you'll see why when we do the interview. And um, I really wish I'd have had a audio, at least an audio recorder going the whole time I was there. To, I'll tell you, I had better conversations off camera, and than I did ever have on camera. So I'm quite psyched. I can't wait um, to show you this interview. Um, just wish I had time to do more. I mean, I. Um, I had some technical glitches, I lost a lot of video, at least I saved the Bill Brock interview, thank God. And so, um, we're going to look at that, and um, some pictures of some of the other things, and um, got some aerials of the, um, well, you'll see, the Ghostbuster car. This main Ghostbusters, they mean it. Oh yeah, either that or they're very, very bored and have nothing better to do. Either way, they're great to talk to and fun to hang around. As a matter of fact, all these people were great. Had a heck of a talk with a medium. Again, I wish I always had a, a darn camera rolling when I'm talking to people because those are where the best 
um, insights and information come from. And uh, I think I am going to start doing the GoPro on the shoulder thing. And I think that will give me far more great content than, you know, sit, try to get people to show up at a booth to have an interview. But anyway, enjoy this. I think you will. So here we are at the 2017 Parafest. It's the first annual and they're hoping to do many more. And I'm your host, Bill Peters. Now, as you saw on the lead-in, we're in a big, huge, old factory that uh, is haunted. And a lot of these paranormal groups are here to be here for the ghost hunt tonight and um, for the show today. So let's go check out some of these great groups. We've got a lot of interest on our table. We've uh, explained the sword and the map. So it, um, it's been a, quite a great turnout for this show. And uh, we'll be having some interviews here in a few minutes. And so stay tuned for that. And much, much more. Okay, this is Bill Peters from Slice, and I'm here with Bill Brock. He's been involved in some very interesting things, uh, Rogue Mysteries. Uh, you'll find that channel on YouTube. And um, Monsters Unearthed was also... Close, close. It's Monsters Underground. Ah. It's close enough, man. It's close enough. See, that's the story of my life. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. All so right. anyway, man, so like, I have yeah. this web series. It's called uh, Rogue Mysteries. Rogue Mysteries is amazing. Basically, what we're doing is looking at... Um, ancient locations and their connection to the paranormal as well, and even the extraterrestrial. Um, and I think that's really interesting because there are connections between the two. And the more I investigate, the more I find more and more connections. And, you know, and a lot of people don't look at that. They don't look at these ancient locations that's and try right. to figure out what they could be connected to. And, and you know, that's what we're doing. That's, oh, that's pretty awesome. Um, what what probably is the most uh, interesting thing that you've noticed? As far as like this connection? Yes, yeah. The connection. Oh man, so um, there was a, an abduction, the Betty and Barney Hill abduction. I just spoke about Perfect. it a little while ago. Not too far from where this happened is this mountain called Shaw Mountain. And on top of that mountain is uh, what we think is a sacrificial table. And it's exactly like the sacrificial table we see at American Stonehenge, which I think is really interesting. Ah, that's the, in New Hampshire, right? Right. The, the yeah. biggest and weirdest thing about all this, man, is like Aleister Crowley. Do you know who Aleister Crowley yes. is? So Aleister Crowley and H.P. Lovecraft were thought, and I haven't been able to prove this yet, but there are rumors out there that they got together on top of Shaw Mountain and did some kind of weird black magic and opened portals. Oh, but, dude, boy. what's so weird about that is so, like, like Aleister Crowley back in the day, he says that he like opened up this portal and let this like little alien guy out called Lamb. You can you can check. Okay, this that out. I've heard of. Yeah. yeah. So, okay. so he did that in the twenties, I think it was. Wow. And so like he let this like little creature through through this portal named Lamb, and he drew a picture of Lamb. And dude, it looks just like a gray alien. It looks just exactly like what we what we see with a gray. And, and he says he did that through opening a portal. And dude, it gets even more weird because Aleister Crowley's thought to open the portal and let, let the Loch Ness monster out. So um, people think that when he lived on the Loch, well, we know this is true because he's talked about it. He's ri he's written about it. He performed all these weird rituals, you know, and he says he opened a portal and let this creature through. And nobody's been able to like disprove it because no one saw the Loch Ness monster prior to this guy saying that he opened up the portal. Oh, okay. I thought maybe that would have gone way back, but no. no. That's it. Like, oh, where wow. he says that, like, he lived there, there's no real sightings before that. And then there's never, there wasn't any real sightings of a gray alien until Crowley said he opened the portal and let the, uh, let Lamb in. And like I said, he's, this little guy looks just like him. I've, I've actually seen a cave painting they found in France that has a gray. Uh, drawn on the wall, um, so I don't know. But cave there are people. Are tough, though. There I mean, are, cave paintings yeah, are difficult. You're right, you're you know, right. we're we're talking about a real modern yeah. depiction of an uh, of a true gray. What what you're looking at, I, I don't know. Like I, no one really. I rem knows. No, you're right. You're right. But yeah. like, <laughs> but 
a lot of these can be like uh, just artwork, you know. Right. But it's hard to say. Maybe what you what you're talking about was a real. Uh, just yeah, just something they found. Um, but there are a lot of people who do think that the grays come through dimensional doorways, so that's not unheard of. Right. That's, um, that's, I, I speak at a lot of conventions around around the U.S. and I just came back from uh, Mothman Festival. Oh yeah. And at the Mothman Festival, I spoke about uh, interdimensional travel mm -hmm. and if dimensions were real and what they were. So basically, make a long story short. Nope. Interdimensional travel isn't real, right? So, like, you can't really travel through dimensions because your body would tear apart because you have to go through an infinite amount of density to be able to spit back outside of a wormhole and, and, and continue moving to where you want to go. So go from spaghetti to real again, yeah. Yeah, so it, it doesn't work that way. But what we have been able to prove through science is there are um, these, these energy molecules that appear and disappear and they can do that dependent on um, how much magnetic frequency or magnetic mm -hmm. waves is crossing because it, when a magnetic wave is crossed, it creates what NASA calls a portal. And, and they've actually seen these energy molecules come in and out uh, of existence. Okay. So they think that when you blast a whole bunch of uh, magnetic waves together, that's what creates a portal. But it's really the wrong word for it. It's not a portal as... Um, Albert Einstein theorized a portal. It's something completely different. It's it's almost like a gateway for energy. So know? we should shut down CERN immediately. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. Right. yeah that's uh, that energy is. Uh, I'm an engineer by trade, right. so so I I deal in math. I, I think that way automatically. Right. So yeah, it would take a huge amount of energy to break that wall down enough to go through. Yeah, people say that if that was legit, if, if portals real, were real and things were traveling through portals, it would require so much energy for something to go through a portal that that planets would collapse. I mean, that's how that's much That's crazy. <laughs> that's a lot. That it would take for something to move through a portal as Albert Einstein envisioned a portal. And, and you know, there's there's these wormholes that ha that are like space and time folded in yes, half, and then right. there's like a connection that between connection, the two. Yeah. And then that's like how a portal works. Right. And so, Einstein's portal <coughs> and the portal we see in the paranormal world are, are completely different. And so I, I, I'm trying really hard to get people to realize that that the paranormal portals are not a scientific Einstein type of portal. It's something else. It's something, it's like this weird conduit where like energy can travel from one place to another. And we don't understand how that happens, but we know it happens. So you can transmit energy much easier than you can mass. Yeah. So right. that makes total sense. Right. Didn't they just like uh, transfer a bunch of, of like information or energy somehow from Earth to the International Space Station? They used yes. They used quantum physics to prove that you could teleport. But the problem with that is, is that in order to do that, the original has to be destroyed, and then a copy made. That is how they did it. I read the Scientific American uh, on that and how they did that, and I was like, well, that doesn't sound like something I want to get into because, A, I don't want to be destroyed and copied. So I think that they have a long ways to go with yeah, that yeah, stuff. Yeah. I don't want to be like annihilated into some smoke and then burn. Yeah, you know, it, yeah. Like, you know, I feel like McCoy on Star Trek when he says, "I'm going to that thing and take me apart." Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's what they did on Star Trek. They they broke it down and, yep. and basically destroyed it and then and, rebuilt it. Yeah. I mean, isn't that crazy? Like Star Trek is actually like legit. About Way ahead stuff. of their yeah. time, boy. Gene, Gene Rod, he was something. Yeah. He had it going on. He was on DMT. Was he? No. <laughs> He had the spirit molecule, man. He was doing it. He was <laughs> doing, doing it. Sure. Well, it's funny. I'm, I'm actually um, friends on Facebook with his niece. Oh, no way. And she's always bringing up stuff, you know, and it's kind nice. of funny. That's yeah. cool, you know, See, he thought of this, too. Yeah, well, yeah. I know. Yeah, he amazing. certainly did. He had, he had way ahead of his time. Absolutely. Um, some even thought that maybe he had contacts with ETs and stuff. I was like, I don't know about that. I think he just was like... Um, Jules Verne, yeah, kind of yeah. a forward thinker. Yeah, just a revolutionary. What would I do if yeah, I could do this? Yeah, yeah. yeah. He was, uh, he was definitely a forward thinker. For, you know, and we always copy science fiction writers. It's a known fact. <laughs> right. We right. do it all the time. Look at Jules Verne, submarines. You know, you got. So, well, I thank you for being on the slice. Um, no we problem, appreciate man. it. We're here at the Parafest 2017. Uh, 
in Vassalboro, Maine with, with Bill Brock. And make sure you check out Rogue Mysteries on YouTube. And I'll see you next time. Thank you. And thank you, sir. Okay, so there you have it. Um, that's what we have today on the slice. And uh, next week, uh, we're going to try to keep it weekly, uh, get back to weekly now that we have the new setups. And we have, actually have some great new cameras coming. It's going to be good. Um, it'll, be, uh, it'll be fun. I uh, plan on doing some live stream on-site stuff. I'm working on a documentary on a couple of things. The documentary is coming up and the content is going to have to be a surprise for now. But we're quite excited about it and I look forward to springing that on you sometime in the near future. Okay, so with that folks, have a great weekend and a, even better tomorrow. And this is Bill Peters on The Slice saying, have a great day. Well, people always tell you what you do. Well, people always stick to you like glue. Well, people always blame someone else People always wait till the ice cream melts People always People always do
Stop. 